It's a funny old place, GB News. The people who don't like us can't stop talking about us. This week, the highly talented BBC presenter and Guardian columnist Jay Rayner tweeted the following. Email arrives, says Jay Rayner. Would I go on GB News to talk about Barry Cryer? I'm terribly sorry. I've just checked my diary and it appears I have to stay in and stick pins in my eyes. That's right. I have to stay in and stick pins in my eyes. Well, we've obviously had one of those weeks because the respected TV writer Eleanor Penny sent the following tweet. It was her draft response to an invitation to appear on this channel. Take a look. And there we are. And uh, it's quite an explosive uh, tweet because this was a tweet that went out, as I've mentioned, uh, to this writer. Uh, she's written for TV. And uh, so uh, our producer has written the following. Hi, Eleanor. I work for Darren Grimes' new GB news show, Real Britain, where we would love you to debate your views on the topic of do we need more British pride in schooling? This would be held on Saturday, the 29th of January at 2 p.m. virtually. We hope you're able to look at this request favorably. That was a message from one of our producers. Here was the draft reply from this young woman. Hi, thanks for getting in touch. I do not look on this request favorably. I would rather fill my vagina up with concrete and walk into the ocean. All the best. Wow. Filling your vagina with concrete. Don't try that one at home, folks. It goes on following the official launch of our late night comedy news program Headliners at 11, which I host every Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and which the brilliant Dominic Frisby and Simon Evans present Monday to Thursday. This was the reaction from the very funny, smart and prolific ex-Radio 4 comedian Mitch Ben. Take a look. Mitch tweeted the following. Oh, look, 13 conservative comedians on the circuit. That's right. Only 13 conservative comedians on the circuit. Now, I suspect that the views of all of these people in regard to the channel are born out of ignorance in terms of what we actually do. They've probably never watched it. I would no sooner take artistic criticism from this lot than I would take marital sex tips from the Pope. And of course, it's OK not to like us, although those that do are a growing army. Over a billion digital views since we came on air less than a year ago. More column inches than you could throw a stick at. And this programme beat Sky News last weekend at 10pm and 9pm on Saturday and Sunday, respectively. So we're doing something right. All thanks to you, of course. Ratings are flying across the board, starting with Eamon and Isabel first thing in the morning to Dan Woodson at night. We are on the march. We're feisty, noisy, cheeky and hopefully a bit different. So why are these public figures so keen to strike out? After two decades in broadcasting, I've had plenty of invitations onto programmes of which I'm not a fan. It's a polite thanks but no thanks from me. And that's the last you'll hear of it. There are channels and TV programmes I'm not wildly keen on, but good luck to them. I want as many voices in our media landscape as possible. It's surprising that Eleanor Penny, who I just mentioned, doesn't share that view, given that her Twitter says she contributes to the famously left-wing Novara media channel. Now, I like Novara. Uh, they've got compelling stuff to say. I want to hear them. I want to watch them and I want to read them. Surely a journalist worth their salt would encourage a diversity of views from our news outlets in the way that, for example, You've got The Guardian and The Telegraph, which, although different, are, in my view, both great papers. But too many of my colleagues want the whole of the media to be an echo chamber. So why do we exist? And why am I minded to think that that should continue? That we shouldn't bow to these bullies who want us to disappear, to go away? Well, it's you. I've had an astonishing number of emails from you describing GB News as a breath of fresh air. That's right, a breath of fresh air. I've heard that phrase so many times, it's hard to ignore. It's telling. And what we're getting from many figures in the mainstream media is quite the opposite. We're not getting fresh air, we're getting hot air. For example, Neil Young, the rock star who was brilliant 50 years ago, 
Withdrawing his music from Spotify in order to get free speech presenter Joe Rogan cancelled. It seems that these broadcasters, journalists, rock stars and comedians want to narrow, not broaden, the media landscape. They want to shut down debate and they don't want you to have a voice. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if these people hate GB News, then frankly, they hate you. That's the message, isn't it? I did wonder if I should do a We Feel Your Pain about Jay Rayner, as I've done so about Ian Dale, Mark Commode, Taylor Swift and Andrew Neil. I'd love to. I was super keen. I discussed it with my production team, but they said Jay isn't a big enough name. He didn't make the cut. The responses to Jay Rayner's tweets are interesting. He had some support from his loyalists, but here's what others had to say. Uh, this is from the North Ace, who says, your tweet says a lot about you. Beverly, what a narrow and snide view you hold. I love GB News. Eggman, Mr. Rayner has no idea of the number of alternative views appearing on TV. And Piers Morgan, what a pompous ass. Well, there you go. Now, the brilliant American author and self-help guru, Dale Carnegie, once said, nobody kicks a dead dog. So these attacks are motivated by something. And it seems they're motivated by a desire to see us fail. And why would that be? Perhaps it's because we're a British news channel that actually likes Britain. Perhaps it because it's because we dare to think that Brexit brings with it, yes, challenges, but opportunities too. And the majority of people voted for Brexit to happen, so we should honour that. And I say that as someone who voted Remain. Perhaps it's because we've dared to question the COVID narrative. Our faces have been covered. Half a trillion quid has been borrowed. And schools, playgrounds and GP surgeries have been chained shut. So we're entitled to ask whether that was a good idea or not. This place offers an alternative approach, an alternative tone and an alternative point of view. And it's something that these arrogant bullies don't want you to have. Now, we won't always get it right. And I'll be honest, we've been through more sound engineers than Hugh Hefner has been through young actresses. What is most interesting is the desire by these characters to lie about our channel. They deliberately mischaracterize the place and they do it all the time. Let's remind ourselves of that Mitch Ben tweet. And there you go. He says, oh, look, uh, 13, only 13 conservative comedians on the circuit. So he's calling all of the people on that poster conservatives. It's very confusing considering several of the people featured in that image include Ian Stone, Rona Cameron, Sir Gila Kershey and Steve N. Allen, famous lefties. It doesn't fit the narrative, does it? But there you have it. I'd love to reply to Mitch Ben's tweet, particularly as he's an old friend that I've known for almost 30 years. But I can't reply to Mitch Ben because he's blocked me. That's nice, isn't it? You see, these people don't want to engage. They don't want to talk. They don't want to debate. Mitch Ben is clearly not a fan of Brexit, fair enough, and he is to the left politically, which is why I extend a warm invitation to him to appear on Headliners, because I want all perspectives on my shows, but I won't hold my breath. That said, he's a regular on Times Radio, so he could clearly do with the work. It's interesting because when you stand up to these bullies, their whole argument collapses like a house of cards. Our on-air and off-air talent come from all backgrounds, all races, ages, creeds, social class and political point of view. For every former UKIP leader, Nigel Farage, there is ex-Labour MP Gloria De Piero. For the record, let me share my political position. People often ask, well, I'm neither left nor right. I'm a liberal. And like so many of you, I feel politically homeless. This place is arguably the most diverse channel in the country in all senses of the word. So what motivates us here at GB News? What is our agenda? Well, we want to inform, stimulate and entertain in equal measure. Most importantly, we want to hear what you think. We want to help you think. And we don't want to tell you what to think. In the end, we're not answerable to any celebrity, 
any journalist or any politician. We're answerable to you. That is the GB News guarantee. This place is for you, it's about you, and it belongs to you. And it always will be. And just for the record, we're not going anywhere.